future of artificial intelligence in Africa. Kindly confirm that you can see my slide. If you can see my slide, just let me know. But if you can, uh, I think I can make it from here. So, as I've been introduced, I will be speaking to us today on the future of, at, yeah, thank you for that. So I'm the Vice Chancellor for Summit University of uh, Kuala State, Nigeria. And that, that's the slide I will be using. And what do I do? I'm into mechatronics engineering, acadopreneurship, artificial intelligence, spiritual intelligence, and borderless learning. Borderless learning. But today, let me quickly say one or two things about my university. That is at Summit University of Fa, we shall be developing innovations and inventions that will be changing the way we live in our community, we defend our nations and work in Africa. We are presently, we are presently and looking at Africa as a whole. And please be, be kindly note that things are changing and they are changing at a fast pace. So just let me share with you some of our projects that we, we have applied and we are presently applying artificial intelligence. One of it has to do with artificial intelligence for clean energy. We have also AI for females in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And, and sometimes ago, we had funded research projects that use AI for what is called cognitive phone, and then AI also for working stick. But today, this is going to be the outline of my presentation. The first one has to do with conceptual clarification, followed by Industry 4.0 and artificial intelligence. Then I will be talking about the future of artificial intelligence in Africa. Though I've been asked to talk about the future of machine learning, but I've tried to change it to be a bit broader than that by, by moving to the future of artificial intelligence in Africa and what's the way or what are the ways forward. So I have that slide tied to the way forward. So, but before going further, let's look at what is called conceptual clarification. Conceptual clarification. First, I will be talking about the mystification. Most people have heard about artificial intelligence, but they don't seem to understand what is it all about. So I'll be clarifying Industry 4.0, artificial intelligence, and provide the distinction or the differentiation between or the differences between artificial intelligence and machine learning. What do we even understand by demystification? Number one is just how to make a difficult subject clearer and easier to understand. That is the removal of mystery or confusion surrounding a topic or an idea. That's what we call demystification. So after this talk, you must be able to understand that AI has come to stay and AI has come to stay in Africa and we are going to be removing any mates or, or what you might be thinking uh, are, are not so clear about artificial intelligence. Let's start with the fourth industrial revolution. Let's start with that, the fourth industrial revolution. We call it Industry 4.0, Industry 4.0. But before that, you know that science, technology, and innovation are the fundamental pillars of any nation as per progress. So the ability of a country to consistently produce valuable and innovative research output is critical to its development, especially at this age. And a major driving factor for this present in this present age is what is called artificial intelligence or what we can assume has to do with industry 4.0 technologies. When you look at the evolution of technology that, 
that you are seeing on the screen. Number some years ago, we talk about landlines, and then to first mobile phone, then we enter the header that what you can only send just has to do with text messages. Then there come a time that we had picture messages, but now we talk about 5G technology where you can send video, audio, music uh, with endless possibilities. Also remember the evolution of technology regarding computer system. Observe that in 1976, what we had there one and the rest, in 1976, is totally different from what we are experiencing now. And now we talk about flat screen, with Macintosh and less that that has on that has so many capabilities, and that has also lead to evolution in the way we work. Sometimes ago we talk about typewriter, but now we talk about wireless mobile phone. We talk about wireless computer, wireless screen. So evolution is about a change in the manner and styles of doing things. With the advent of Industry 4.0 technology, we shall be witnessing series of changes in the way we work, the way we talk, and the way we defend our nations in Africa. And that now leads us to the, the history about what is called industrial evolution. We have witnessed we have witnessed the first industrial revolution that has to do with mechanization. Then we move to what is called the mass production assembly line under the second industrial revolution. Before moving to the third industrial revolution where we witness computer and automation. But we are now talking about the fourth industrial revolution that has to do with cyber physical system. Cyber physical system. So, and the cyber physical system is what we talk about under the fourth industrial revolution that involves minimal human intervention. What is the meaning of cyber physical system? Uh, that is CPS, cyber physical is a system of collaborating, collaborating computational elements, controlling physical entities. That's what we do on the, on the cyber physical system. And the CPS are physical system and whose operation are monitored, coordinated, controlled, and integrated by computing and communication core. So you have three things there, computation, communication, and control under the cyber physical system and these are what you have on the screen right now is the list of some of these technologies associated with the with the fourth industrial revolution and this is a non-exhaustive list a non-exhaustive list you have the artificial intelligence you have the big data robotics and mechatronics renewable and clean energy smart cities blockchain 3d and so on but i want us to pay attention to the first one which has to do with artificial intelligence. And that's what we are going to be talking about today. What is artificial intelligence? You have two words there. You have two words there. You have artificial intelligence. You have artificial married with intelligence. And we call it artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is, is just the transfer of intelligence in man to machine. That is a way of making a computer or what you call a computer control robot. And at times it can be ordinary software to think intelligently in the similar manner the intelligent human thinks. That is the act of creating machine that can perform function that, it could, that require intelligence when performed by people. That's what artificial intelligence is all about. So we can describe it as the study of how to make computers do things at which at the moment or at the present, people are better hard. So how do we make computer or computer control robot or software to do 
those tasks. That's what artificial intelligence is all about. And these are what you are seeing on the screen is a list of some of the known AI techniques. That is, we have the artificial neural network, we have the fuzzy logic, we have the genetic algorithm, and so on. So my first question for us today is, can machines think? Can they really think? And can they be better than human beings? So can machine think? But before going further, let's understand the difference between AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Let me put this way that machine learning is a subfeed of artificial intelligence. It is just part of AI. So machine learning has to do with algorithms whose, whose performance improve as they are expanded to more data over time. So machine learning as a field of study uh, that provides computer with ability to learn without needing to code explicitly. That is not just about coding, no, it's about learning, it's about intelligence, and it's about uh, evolution. So we have the machine learning life cycle here for us from data gathering to data preparation to data wrangling analysis. Then you develop a model, you train the model, and you test the model before you deploy. So that's, machine learning has given the computer system the ability to automatically learn without being explicitly programmed. And normally, we go through these seven stages. So these are some of the things you may need to actually look at when we talk about machine learning. But machine learning algorithm can be broadly classified into three types. We have what is called supervised learning. We have what is called unsupervised. And then we have what is called enforcement learning. That is, when we talk about supervised learning, they are, in that case, you have the training data and the expected output, or what you call the target data. Why for the unsupervised, you just have the input data without associated target output. So for the supervised learning, you train it, and then from there, it evolves and learn. And both, 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 both techniques are used in different scenarios and with different data sets. So the one thing again, as per the mysti demystification of artificial intelligence or machine learning is that it's in multi it has multidisciplinary applications from transportation to home automation, healthcare, education, public safety, manufacturing, agriculture, banking, oil and gas, and so on. The application is just endless you have it everywhere and you can apply it so the next question is when is the future if you are talking about the future of artificial intelligence is it now or later for this talk we are going to be looking at future uh, and, and what do we mean by future we mean today we mean right now that is what is really happening now not what's going to happen tomorrow because during this, during this ongoing fourth industrial revolution, future means right now, right now. So, but before going further, let's look at humanoid robot, especially humanoid robot in Africa and what's, what's happening right now. So humanoid robot in Africa is one of the areas that we are going to be talking about as the future of artificial intelligence. Omefe is a humanoid robot that was unveiled in Nigeria in 2022 on, on December 2nd. So that's what we mean by future, which is now. What are the other areas of application that is the future of AI in Africa? Number one, AI will definitely affect education and is being applied in the field of education, in the field of healthcare, in business, in finance, in manufacturing, and in law, more, even more than this. So this is just a representation of some areas we can apply AI, and which area AI is being applied in Africa. Let's look at the others, other areas, especially let's look at sports. 
can we apply artificial intelligence in sports? Yes, of course. Presently, we, we talk about Paralympics and then we also talk about Robocop, that is where robots can play uh, football and this. You can see it uh, also in biomechatronics that focus on the, interact on the interactivity of biological organs with electromechanical or mechatronics devices and system. So that's one area we can apply AI in sport and which has been and which Africa is also contributing. What of in the area of security? Number one, you must have heard about surveillance monitoring, robotic patrol, bomb disposal, and global army. Africa, most some of the countries in Africa are presently witnessing insecurity. So AI in security is another area of application. And you will have seen some of these things being deployed across some countries in, an, in Africa and outside Africa. So this is one area AI can be, AI find usage in recent time. What of education? AI in education sector, number one, we now talk about self-learning, providing access, 24-hour access to, to teaching, to learning, and we talk about personalized training and, and universal access. If it's about personalized training and universal access, then AI has come to stay in Africa and especially in achieving this. What of in agriculture? AI also has a lot of roles to play, and then we talk about smart livestock now. Smart livestock farming allows the farming industry to leverage on uh, to leverage on artificial intelligence and digitization. So we talk about smart smart livestock, and we talk about precision livestock and precision farming. So that's another area that AI will definitely be disrupting Africa continent and the rest of the world. What of in edge sector? AI in edge sector is another area. We talk about AI in healthcare for the for mining medical record in terms of virtual healthcare assistant, chatbot, treatment design, and so on. And then we other roles of AI may include interacting with patients in the hospital because study has shown that AI are humanoid robots and that they, they can also provide support for patients while in hospitals and the rest. And then for for plus tactics and the rest, you can see AI being deployed there. So AI will also uh, definitely affect the healthcare sector in Africa and the world at large. What of in transportation? Yes, that's another area. Uh, you we will soon be hearing vehicle to vehicle communication system, and we'll that's V2V, and we also talk about V2 high, that is vehicle to infrastructure communication system. As of now, in Africa, this may still be in the laboratory, but very soon a high will definitely play a magnificent role in transportation system in Africa. And one of the areas that we are looking at presently in our university or, and with our partnering university, it is in the development of an intelligent navigation scheme for autonomous vehicles in outdoor environment that are suitable for Africa and for deployment in Africa. So under that one door, in my university, we have been working on that and we call it V2V communication system, just, just as it is called in other parts of the world. And we are presently developing a, 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 an algorithm for that. These are the other areas that we have applied machine learning and artificial intelligence in recent time. In diabetes classification, in voice recognition, in vascular intersection detector in, in retinal fundus image for the detection of diabetic retinopathy or for the detection of diabetes. 
and then voice activity detection, especially regarding isolated one. And now we are presently applying it for pipeline leakage prediction and detection, and also plant leaf disease identification. That is applying AI in all this. We have mentioned that AI has come to disrupt the technologies in Africa and the way we live and the way we work in Africa. So what's the way forward? We, there are some skills that we need in addition to AI and we call, that, uh, we call those skills the 10 skills that must be acquired in addition to the knowledge of AI. Number one has to do with creativity. That's another future that we need to look at additional question because we may also need to be having emotional emotional question to the field of AI. Uh, under the responsible artificial intelligence, we also critical thinking. We must also have these skills in order to transfer it to our machine. The judgment and decision making with active learning with a growth mindset. And again, interpersonal communication skills, that's another thing we need to add to our AI with, with our AI skills. Then we talk about leadership skill, cultural intelligence, and technological skills. AI comes under technological skill because we need to marry AI with the other things we are doing. And then we must know that under this fourth industrial revolution, we must learn how to embrace change or changes. And again, we must be talking about education 4.0 where we talk about fusion of knowledge with skills and fusion of artificial intelligence with whatever we are doing. And we must also be talking about skills that enhance and goes along with the fourth industrial revolution. We call it education 4.0, education 4.0. And again, the way forward and which also the future of artificial intelligence in Africa has to do with knowledge economy. That is the use of knowledge to create economic benefit, especially in terms of high technology, businesses, and I, this may include computer software development, telecommunication, virtual services, and so on and so forth. So this is the future of AI in Africa. And when we say future, we mean now. So that's another thing that we must presently look at in Africa because knowledge economy is not, is not about economy of scarcity, but rather, uh, the, but rather that of abundance. So the effect of, local, of location will be diminished and totally removed by, by the application of artificial intelligence in Africa, in, in some of our fields in Africa. So, because we also need to know that knowledge enhanced products or services can command price premium over comparable product with low embedded knowledge or knowledge intensity. So in conclusion, machine learning or artificial intelligence is a method of teaching computers to learn from data without being explicitly program, that's machine learning. And we must not forget that uh, machine learning is a soft feed of artificial intelligence. And that soft feed involves building algorithm and Moses that enable computer to learn from and make decision without human intervention. And artificial intelligence is this, it can be regarded as transfer of intelligence from man to machine. And the future in Africa lies in this fourth industrial revolution, where we take uh, advantage of knowledge economy because it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many resources we have in Africa. What really matters is how to use them. So if we, ne if we don't master how to use them by the application of artificial intelligence, those resources will never be enough. Thanks a lot for listening. And 
I can take questions and comment. Thank you. Okay, I, I can see one question here. Uh, please, can you, the question goes to us. Can you throw more light on AI with education? I want to build a data model for my final year project. I want it to solve a problem in my university, but I have no idea on what to do. Okay, that's the first question. And, the, and okay, I'm going to regard this other one as a, as a comment, unless we know the problem, we can share insight on it. I totally agree. That's the right question. That's the right answer. So, one thing when we say here, I can be applied in education. Yes, in addition to final year project and the rest, you must define the problem because based on the problem, that's when we can know what solution to 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 suggest. Are you building a model? If what you are to build this model, I would definitely recommend artificial neural network. But if what you are to build is more or less an optimization, that you have a model or you have an equation already, or, or what we call you have the objective function, then what I will recommend will be genetic algorithm or any of the evolutionary algorithm. And when what you are doing or what you want to do has to do with imprecision, I would definitely recommend fuzzy logic. And at times, you may need to combine more than one approach or more than one technology uh, in solving your problem. In that case, I would definitely recommend a hybrid system. It may be a neural fuzzy system or the hybrid of artificial neural network and genetic algorithm. So thank you. Okay, unless yes, so unless we really know the problem, we can share insight. So please, we must. You can throw more light on the question, please. Okay. Yes, I will appreciate. And okay, please. I have a, there's this question. Please, I have a question on algorithm implementation for obstacle avoidance, autonomous robotics. I will appreciate any insight on it. Okay, thanks a lot for asking about obstacle avoidance. Uh, what type of algorithm you are using? Uh, we have a lot of algorithm out there. Some are even open source. Try YOLO V. It, it, it may be YOLO. Try any of the YOLO version. And, or if it is about obstacle, you may also try SLAM. Yeah. You may also try SLAM algorithm and less. So, but I will advise that when it is about obstacle avoidance, then it must be a hybrid of image processing and AI, except if what you are using has to do with just sensors that you may have to acquire the, the sensor reading and be able to profile that in order to de detect the obstacle. So I will share more. Okay, if any, please share insight I've mentioned uh, try Jolo V algorithm and then try Slam algorithm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Please, I will. There is this question on I would like you to shed more light on application of AI with regard to transportation aside from building automated vehicles. AI has a lot of application in transportation. One of it is. Uh, uh, Route, route optimization. That is, how do you visit some places and using at the least cost? So that is, uh, whenever you use map algorithm or Google map on, on your phone, that is one application of AI because it helps you plan your movement and also give you the shortest route to your destination with information. 
part of what we are presently working on uh, the Federal University of Technology Minor uh, under the AERG, that is Advanced Engineering Innovation Research Group. It is what they call uh, load, load anomalies detection. When you look at some of or most of uh, some roads in Africa, you will see that some of these roads at times seems to seems not to be motorable, very bad and less. And, and this has caused deaths. When you say that very high death rate, or he's responsible for a lot of accidents in Africa. So we are presently developing uh, an, an intelligent algorithm that we able to detect what is called portals and some other road anomaly. Not only detect it, update the database uh, using this citizen sensing approach. And with this, we will be able to advise other road users on a real-time basis. That's also one thing we are doing. And then we have, for, we have also worked in, in the recent past on vehicle manifest, the, uh, on e-manifest. That is, you have what is, you enter a vehicle traveling to another point, how do you ensure that, you're, that you are safe? It's about safety on the road. And aside that, we have also used it for communication. That is under the V2V, -V, that is vehicle to vehicle communication. How will your vehicle be able to tell other vehicles of what that vehicle has experienced on the road? It's about experience sharing, information gathering, and information exchange. What, okay, another question here is what areas in education can machine learning be applied to? When we talk about virtual learning or, or e-learning, we have applied AI to mental health, mental health information, because most of, most of the students are, are in remote area and they need to learn on their own under the personalized learning approach. And they are being faced with a lot of issues by just capturing their, their face using the camera, on the laptop, on the phone, you can analyze the state of their mental health and give appropriate recommendation or suggestion. That is one way. And then how do you advise what uh, for your cost taking and dress and planning? Yes, right now I'm not using the slide. Presently I'm not using the slide. So, I finished the content of the but the slide will be shared after this talk by the organizer. So you can also use AI for note taking and and planning. And apart from that, you can use it to plan your reading style and reading time. That's one. And in recent time, we have also applied it in uh, what is called internet optimization. The coverage or internet penetration in some villages or rural or remote areas in Africa is still very low. So how do your system detect which network to connect in order to give you optimal experience? So that's another area we have applied AI in recent time. Okay, there is a question that how do we apply AI in traffic jam on Lagos Street and what model are necessary for that? Presently, even with your, with your Google map and the rest, Google map will give you best, best route to take at any time T that you are using Lagos Road. And that one will show you uh, what, what area or what route or what street or what, uh, what street to take. So with that, but don't forget, that one is still manually done. So what we are looking at is, the, is what you call citizen sensing approach, where your vehicle can make an informed decision on its own. That's another area that we are looking at. So with traffic can jam, I will just advise you that you can use the Google map. It is, and then you can also use it to plan your movement. Please, what do you think about using AI for remote invigilation? Uh, it's not what we, what I think. AI has been used for remote. AI is presently being used for remote invigilation 
in some universities in Nigeria. And I can tell you that it has, it has shown very good results. And even during COVID, we deployed some in some universities in Nigeria. And I can tell you the result is fantastic. How can we have AI conference in Nigeria? Okay, let me use this opportunity to invite you to our upcoming conference at Summit University in the month of June 2023. Summit University is, is located at offer. And when you visit our website, ai4fs.com.ng, that's another one. So that's a, a, that's a conference. And then about two months ago at, uh, at University of Lagos, uh, no, at University of Ibadan, in Dabahex, and then they also organized AI conference. So what I will suggest is always check for information, even with the, with, with the organizer, and then, so there is this question, can I present a paper at the conference? Yes, you will definitely have opportunity to, to present AI-related work at the conference. And let me assure you that you will meet some of some AI gurus from around the world at that conference. And also, when you look at the slide, you will see that one thing that we are passionate about at Summit University is artificial intelligence. And, and we have four specialization there that you, that you may be interested in. So visit us there and then visit our, web, our website. And again, we have a lot of AI programs, uh, like we have AI Saturday in Lagos, we are run by Miriam and the rest. So you have a lot of other programs that you can actually learn. So, but most, what it is, okay. Most importantly is that for us to navigate, for us to develop Africa, we need to stop talking about natural resources. We must be talking about what is called knowledge economy. And knowledge economy has to do with the fourth industrial revolution. When we talk about EV, that is electric vehicle now, that has, uh, with EV and AI, that means Nigeria can also be manufacturing. I, I'm not talking about assembly. Assembly. Because with EV, you don't need that, that block engine again. You don't need all those things again. So AI, or what is called Industry 4.0, has come to make Africa to be a key player in this present revolution we talk about the fourth industrial revolution. So if you, are an, if you are an undergraduate or a graduate in any university or so higher, higher institution in Nigeria, you must definitely acquire the knowledge of AI. AI, you need to apply it in your final year project. You can also take courses online. And I'm sure the organizer, Octave Machine Learning, will also, uh, uh, I'm sure they will they will, they they too have some courses that you will benefit. So thank you for your time, and I thank you all. Except if I have, except if I if there are other questions that you want me to address. So um, I'm here, and let me also thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge and experience with the audience. Thank you all. Or do we have from the audience any other question that you want me to treat?
Thank you. 